welcome back to my channel. I have a very special guest today, Jessica Darrow, who plays Louisa in Encanto. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Oh, this is so good. This is going to be so good. I'm so excited. Um, Firstly, <laughs> for those people that haven't seen the film yet, can you tell us a little bit, bit about your character, Louisa, and what her powers are? Yeah, so Louisa is the rock of the family in La Familia Madrigal, and her gift is super strength. Um, so, I mean, as we know, well, I mean, you know, for people who don't know the film, the film is about this very magical family uh, within this community in Colombia, and everyone kind of looks up to them, and because of their magical powers, it is up to them to pretty much, you know, do everything that needs to get done around town. So not only do they have the burdens of the you know, um, the maintenance of their community on their shoulders, but also within their own families as well. Uh, and Louisa very much uh, holds it all together in many ways, not just physically. <laughs> nice. Now, how did you manage yeah. to like get this role? What was your audition like? I love audition stories. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> so I actually, what's crazy is that I auditioned for this right before the pandemic started. And um, so long I ago. Yes, so long ago. It was it was March 2020. And I actually just happened to be in LA in person. I actually live in New York. I'm based in New York. And um, I just, you know, it, it was kind of a, the way everything happened was very serendipitous because my my manager actually lives out there. Um, I've, I've got a bi-coastal team. And I was like, you know what? I hadn't even like met him in person at that point. So I was like, <laughs> let me just go. Like I wasn't doing anything. I was like, let me meet my manager. Let me go see if I can just go do something in LA. It was literally just like, you know, an actor having a moment of like crisis and change. Like I just need change in, in my career. So I just, I literally just went just to go. And then I got this call from my um, commercial agency asking if I wanted to go in person to do this voiceover audition, because I usually send them over like any voiceover audition I do, I do a lot of commercial stuff and they're usually sent over just like my phone. But she yeah, said, hey, this sense. is for, yeah, right? You don't yeah. need to, especially with technology today, right? You don't need to go in person. But in this case, it made all the difference because they said, hey, you happen to be there. If you want to take an Uber to Burbank, California to Disney Animation Studios, you can go audition there. I said, well, I'm here for experiences. I'll take the $50 Uber. So I went and, um, yeah, I, after I auditioned um, with Jamie, the casting director, it was, yeah, it was like a wrap. She was just like, okay, great. This was awesome. I sang I'll Make a Man Out of You from Mulan. Oh, I love that oh, song. Is, yeah, that's right. Oh. I feel like it's very, it's perfect for Louisa. I oh, feel perfect. Like very, it sits in her range really well. And I, I had no idea who Louisa was even going to be at that time. I just saw her character description or her breakdown and I was like, well, this sounds like me, an overly emotional, like buff crybaby. Like, I don't know, like tough on the outside, mushy gushy on the inside. I was like, that's me. Um, and just reading the lines with her in person, she really got a sense of just like my personality and was just so set on me having a callback. And then the pandemic happened. Oh, and everything ruins everything. Down. It ruined, yeah, right? <laughs> and it keeps going, baby. Oh, Jesus. It's not um, ending. <laughs> it's never ending but we 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 persevere and we push through and we make we, we make it work for us um because that is the beauty of people coming together right but um in this scenario I just I had to let it go I had no idea what was going to happen I just because you know the whole world was crashing down around us just I had to put it out of my brain hmm. and um then I got a call in like I'd say that July and I was asked to do a Zoom callback meeting with um, Jared Bush and Byron Howard and um, the rest of the casting team. I was like, damn, y'all want me to just like get on Zoom right away? Okay. <laughs> I just had this like chill Zoom call with them. And they were just, it was, when I tell you, it was one of the most thoughtful audition processes because I think we probably spent like maybe a little over an hour on there. They were just talking to me about like asking me questions about my family, my own personal family dynamic and how I felt like uh, I fit in within it and the role I play. And uh, yeah, they were just really getting a sense of myself. And then they almost forgot to ask me to sing. And I was like, oh, do you guys like want me to sing? Like, oh yeah, 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 sing. And I did, I like sang. 
just give me the part. I didn't need to sing. It's fine. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Jared it tells me now that apparently they were like at that point, which is why they like forgot to even like ask me to sing. They were like, damn, she's so cool. And I was like, cool to know that I'm cool. But anyway, um, I was like, okay. And so I sang the song uh and they were like okay that, that's great that's perfect and I said is it okay and then I didn't hear back for like another two months oh, and then no. I know we're, I'm giving you the full like scope here and then oh. came I mean it was like three and then came October and uh it was I feel like it was still like pretty like peak pandemic and I hadn't taken a shower in days watching my hundredth movie of the day I'm just like oh uh, like sitting there uh, sitting with my bestie who I was living with at the time. And then I got this call saying that they they wanted me as Louisa. I was like, you didn't even like prepare me for this. Like no one <laughs> prepared me for this phone call ahead of time. And I just freaked out. I just, you know, it's, um, it didn't feel real. Honestly, a lot of this still doesn't feel real. But what I obviously did right after I got the call was I called my, my family and we were just going crazy on FaceTime. And oh, my family is so... Yes, they are so obsessed with Disney. So we all were like, oh my God, this is not just my dream. It's the family's dream coming true. We're so obsessed. So yeah, uh, and the fact that it's songs written by Lemingo Miranda, like it's my whole, just everything that have brought me to where I am is now involved in in this career, in this job. Like it's just, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's pretty full circle. One yeah. thing to ask you, obviously Louisa has like a very different look to like every Disney character ever. Like I've never seen a female character so buff and muscular, which is like amazing. What was yeah. your reaction when you first saw that? Were you expecting her to look like that when you were auditioning or were you were like, wow? Yeah, right? Well, I, I definitely was like, wow, wow in all the most amazing ways because I knew that she uh, she had like this gift. Like when I got the initial breakdown, uh, I knew that this was supposed to be like a magical person and it was like she's very strong that's like her thing it's super strength so I had I had in mind that you know she was probably going to I mean be uh, toned in some capacity but this is like all the way she's super buff I was I was just so pleased because I mean I I'm an actor and I what I love most is playing different kinds of people I want to tell as many different kinds of stories as possible but the fact that this was one that was so close to me but in a character that looked so different than me but also similar in, at the same time um I don't know I'm pretty buff myself okay yeah it, um, it's good she's definitely got a lot of you in there despite being you know like yeah. huge huge <laughs> huge yes jinx and uh but no I mean I was just like I'm so ready to take this on and I'm also like an active person I I mostly, I, I run, uh, I try to do it every day, but I run a lot because just to help with my anxiety, you know, not mm. even like to stay fit. But I, I also, I do enjoy maintaining a fit lifestyle. God, it just sounds so lifestyle. annoying. Lifestyle. Lifestyle. I know, right? God, kill me. I don't enjoy trying to eat right or whatever, but you know, I who actually, I, I, yeah, yeah. Who, who does? But I've now I've actually come to a point in my life where I've I have a really great balance and um yeah I mean playing Louisa I I don't know even though it's an animated character I was like let me go all the way I'm just gonna keep taking care of myself and I yeah. started picking up weights but yeah it was great I'm so I love playing this character and it's just as you know it's it, like you said it's not the your typical Disney princess mm. type but she's still so sexy and cool and oh like my gosh. Just, I've seen so much yeah. fan art of Louisa I think more than yeah. like any other character a lot of people <laughs> very sexy yes. There's a lot of good stuff. I'm sure you've seen most of it and you're like wow. I have it's uh it's amazing but it, it really warms my heart to see people taking a liking because they, they're also they're seeing themselves in her as well and mm. it's it's just so I mean authenticity is a, I feel like being more embraced at this moment mm -hmm. in you know in this time it's a very weird but special time it's like you know you have all of the scary hatred coming to the surface mm -hmm. but you also have a lot of the like blatant like love and appreciation that people have for people just being honest and being themselves and being authentic mm -hmm. so I think the fact the fact that Disney is now making it 
uh, a debut for this female character that is has, has never been seen before is also this big corporation's way of saying, hey, this is cool. And yeah, if anyone else wants to look like this, it's cool. We approve. You can you can be in movies, too. You know, and I love it's, that. it's so right. And it's so, yeah. it's so important for for kids to see that. And it's not only is it important for kids to be able to see someone that, you know, looks like them or they aspire to, to be like, but it's also important for them to see different kinds of kids playing heroes. So they can see mm-hmm. like, you know, it's not just about me. It's, it's everyone else as well. There's so many different kinds of stories that are going on. And actually I can find myself in all of them. And Encanto has so much of that. Oh, it's so good to have all the diversity. Like I've learned so much about like, Colombia and like with Brian the Last Dragon I learned so much about Southeast Asia so just like bringing that to people that aren't normally exposed to it I think is just so important because like I never would have thought I'd ever know this much about Colombia which is exactly and and, and to do it through like the Disney platform like Mm -hmm. they know this is where all the people are gonna come like everyone we we love Mickey if Mickey tells us to do it we're gonna do it (laughs) for sure yeah Oh, one question I have to ask you. Obviously, you sing an amazing song in the movie, Surface Pressure. I have been listening to it like nonstop. Your voice is incredible. I love it so much. What was the recording process like for that song? Like, did you have to record it a bunch of times on a bunch of different days? Or is it just like one take, perfect, done? (laughs) Uh, Well, you know, this was my first time actually learning a song that that wasn't from like another person's voice mm-hmm. first like I was creating it I mean actually I listened to Lin Manuel's demo which oh, was pretty sick oh I so um, want to hear that I've heard about his oh my demos God. oh I feel like yeah they're, they're right it's like a classic thing people talk about his demo specifically and then Please you like kind of start to you start to uh like uh kind of inherit his own like mu- musical like mannerisms like I feel like there's so many parts in the song where I'm like I'm pretty sure I'm worthless. Like it's very like Hamilton-y, like or when when what what is a the part the super like Hamilton-y? I feel like is like yeah, wanna wanna fight Cerberus, like that part. <laughs> and it's just so well, right? Oh, well, right? uh, it's such a good yeah. song. I can't get yes, it out of it's my so, head. it's so good. I mean, it was amazing to to do it. I I'd say yeah, it really it did not take long to record. But the first day that we recorded, I think it was like three days in total. And um, the first day that we recorded it was just like, uh, it was amazing. Cause seeing Lin-Manuel, the last time I saw him was after a play that I saw in the 10th grade. He, I saw In the Heights, his, his play, his musical. I and um, oh my yes, God. we love In the Heights, right? In the I Heights is too. amazing. Yes, but the love musical it. itself, like, when I saw that on stage, I was like, oh, this is my favorite Broadway musical of all time. And then I just immediately became obsessed with him and he wasn't as popular then. So he happened to come to the showing of In the Heights in this theater in Miami. And I heard his voice in the lobby and I'm freaking out and no one else is freaking out because no one like, yes, that was me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. And I see him behind me. I'm like, oh, please let me take a picture with you. And I have this really embarrassing photo of me just like crying. And he's like, like standing next to me. And I'm just like, ah. <laughs> and um I fully showed that photo to him on that first day of recording <laughs> oh my god I was like hey dude I'm sorry but like this is so full circle like I gotta show you this and I just pulled it up during the break and I put it up to the screen and he starts quoting Hamilton to me oh my god of course <laughs> oh just we like, need to get you, you in you Hamilton would. be like hi Lynn <laughs> um I'm available I live in New York <laughs> Well, I mean, you said it here. You, we you heard know, it here, folks. I'm just putting it out there, giving people ideas. <laughs> hey, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, if it's meant mm. to happen, it'll happen, right? When you were recording the song, did you have any idea like what was going to be going on during the song, like visually? Did you know that you were going to be riding on a unicorn donkey? That is my question. Because that's Did I know that I was pivotal. going to be riding on a unicorn donkey? Yes, yes. It is very pivotal. Uh, I did not know that I was going to be riding on a unicorn donkey, to be honest. I just, I was told that there was going to be a bunch of gorgeous Disney visuals. And they said that it was uh, probably going to include like Louisa fighting crime, like in some sort of a sense, or just like, you know, just mm-hmm. some, I don't know. So I imagine there would probably be some sword play, some, I don't know. But the lyrics that I was, that I was singing, I, I really... 
I mean, I, those kind of took me away because they're so devastating and, and powerful. That's the thing about living while's writing. It's mm. just, it really it hits you at your core. And at first I was like, oh, oh, this will be fine. Like, it's just going to be like a pop number. I'll just like, you know, just belt it out and it'll be cool. But as I kept going through it, I was like, whoa, I'm finding like way too many meanings that are relating to my personal mm. life. And, but then that is what, you know, truly got the emotion out of me at the end of the day. So I wasn't, you know, thinking about what is this going to look like? I was really thinking about just how this story kind of feels similar to my own. Um, and the fact that I also recorded this song early on in my recording process, like even before I recorded some like pivotal dialogue throughout the film, it was very telling for the rest of my character building for Louisa, you know, it influenced so much more. I knew that, you know, she had this moment where she really let her heart out and just like put it on display for her sister to see like, hey, this is just a glimpse into like what's going on in my head, just mm -hmm. so you know. And it really colored the rest of, of my lines and my delivery for everything else. It's, um, yeah, Louisa is so amazing. And, um, you know, I, I feel like everyone in the film gets like, what's so great about What's so great about the film is that it's based on characters. It's very character driven and people love to see that because we love to see different kinds of stories. And I feel like everyone gets their, you know, perfect amount of time. And like, you know, I know that some people are saying like, oh, Louisa, like I wish there was more, but I feel like she's just, after you hear her song, you can kind of interpret like mm -hmm. all of the weight that she is feeling for the rest of the film. And I just, yeah, I, it, it feels like just one of the most perfect parts I've been able to play. It's, I really, I have no qualms with how anything, any of the process went. It's all been amazing and magical. Well, you can get more time in the sequel or Disney Plus series. Yeah, that's a point, yeah. or, or Louisa spinoff, right? Yeah, the Louisa Disney Plus series spinoff. It'll, it'll happen. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If we totally got a spinoff, one thing that I really would love to see is inside Louise's magical room. Because we didn't get to see inside her no. room. What do you think is inside her room? Do you have any theories, anything like that? I totally daydream about it. Just like mad protein shakes, quest bars, <laughs> like all the weights you want. But I feel like her weights aren't just like regular. I feel like she's got her own like, I, I feel like she's got actual like houses and wagons that like herself that she like practices with. She must, but also I feel like she uh, is a clean freak. I don't know something, maybe it's just cause like I kind of am. And that also makes me think, because I also like to imagine that she hangs out with her donkeys and that like the donkeys have a space in the room to chill out if they want oh, I like that. but I like that. yeah but she also like donkeys like smell really bad so how is she maintaining that I don't know we're gonna uh, <laughs> but something something in the room there's like a donkey pen and then um yeah I, she just got like this huge fridge just filled with all you can eat because she always has to stay carbo loaded because mm -hmm. she's lifting all these weights you know what I'm saying so mm -hmm. um yeah I feel like there's a lot of that I think she's definitely got a lot of purples in there we got some teal some white silver that's what I imagine she's got a huge luxurious bed oh god I was definitely like oh dang I wish I could see her room but if this was her room this would totally be it oh I was so curious to find that out that was my one thing at the end of the movie I'm like yeah. but what about the other room but what about the room I know right it's like <laughs> what could you possibly put in there it's probably just like they what would they do like a bunch of weights and stuff I feel like there is a lot yeah. of routes we could go but like you said mm -hmm. we will find out sequel. what the room has in the sequel mm -hmm. yeah we're putting it out there it's got to happen sequel. they're doing a disney plus yeah. series for everything they've got to do it Ex i know right <laughs> right let's do it everyone yeah. loves Louisa, bro she's so relatable i love her love so it. much well my final question is i recently saw that you were in florida for destination d23 i yes. the world i live there for my disney college program i Absolutely oh my god it. you went to the college program yes. I've, I've had friends who went to that program how did you like it oh i loved it i worked on journey into imagination so oh yeah i was on the god. figment ride oh my god you were just fully on the figment ride how did you feel were you like this is my dream oh i loved it i loved like every single second of it it was just like Amazing. wow um i wanted to ask you though like what is your favorite thing to do at disney world while you were there Oh my God. Okay. 
my favorite What's thing. Your Insta? <laughs> I love I love Disney World. Oh, I love everything about it, right? Actually, I was so lucky to be able to also bring my best friend there and it was her first time in Disney World. So <gasps> that right? I know everyone has the same reaction, like, oh my God, a first timer. And you know, I of course forced her to walk around with the button on saying that it was her first time. Mm. But I was really like living through that. Uh, but I'd say my my go-tos, like my favorite things are, I mean, I love Tower of Terror and Hollywood Studios is just like, oh, such mm. a, a special place in my heart. And then I think that that park is my favorite, but then I go to Epcot and I'm like, oh my God, I love you Epcot. And then I go it's to my fan. Yes, right, right. Well, hello, Figment. And I, yeah. I go and then I go to um uh I go to Japan and their store there with like all of their amazing memorabilia. I always rate it out because I also love anime. I love Sailor Moon, I love Miyazaki. Cool. So I love I go there, I'm not even like buying Disney products, I'm buying like straight up anime. <laughs> but um it's uh that's the place that you gotta hit up. And I'd say just like walking around the world is my favorite thing to do but uh, then my favorite ride see I don't even know I love Pirates of the Caribbean oh, and I, I love, love Splash Mountain yes I just I love the rides that are Splash Mountain I think is probably one of the best because they've got all the characters and you can you know you see all these like animatronics and everything and it's all sweet and colorful and beautiful and then you've got the like big plunge at the mm. end but i know that they're supposed to be turning it into a uh, princess and the frog ride which yes. i am so excited for yeah me too like oh my god how are y'all gonna do that they're so, apparently yeah. gonna keep a lot of the animatronics though like a lot of the animals so they're not because gonna it go does away. take place in louisiana okay yeah. cool, cool, cool. so okay, it's kind sweet. of gonna be the best of both worlds yeah, right. Yes. And then all the food. I also dined at Be Our Guest for the first time. So I would say oh. you guys do have to like hit that up if you if you do go there for sure. That but being at the place. summit was amazing. Yes, I love it so much. And I love how they literally give you the gray stuff. Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> and then the beast came out and I was like crying. And I'm like, please, I love your work. But we can't take photos next to him. I get it. He's too big of a star. It's cool. It's cool. One day they'll have Louisa there for meet and greets and you'll be like oh on the God. first plane over to Orlando. You'll be like, I'm here. I'm ready. I mean, if they, <laughs> listen, I, uh, yeah, that would be insane. I actually, when we were watching the, um, the fireworks show, apparently it's a new one that they have. I forget the name of it. Uh, but it was on a Sunday. We saw it at 8 PM at Magic Kingdom. And it was spectacular and I can't help it, but I had the thought of like listening to surface pressure during the fireworks show because I think it would be a perfect fireworks song. We'll just you know, it's just got like- We'll just add it in. It'll be fine. Yeah. We've got so many suggestions on this interview. <laughs> right? Hey, we're coming up with a lot. Yeah, we've got, we're, we've got we're the ideas. Thinking. Hello. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. Seriously, it feels like just yesterday when you were announced and I didn't know who you were playing. So I was like listening to like a show reel of yours online with my eyes closed. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think this chess girl is Louisa. Okay, I'm putting it in the video. Uh, uh, so to listen, like talk to you uh, guys crazy. So, oh my God, you are amazing. And you are so smart and you must continue to trust your instincts because they are very like on point. And when you, when you guessed that cast, because I saw that video too that came out, I was like, how did she know that this was me? Like, you yep. you got them ears, girl. You really it, know what you're talking about. So. It was just me listening to your showreel over <laughs> and over. <laughs> but it's just so, it's so thorough and you're also very like thoughtful and you're very sweet. You just like, you really know how to connect with the audience. So like, seriously, and thank you for featuring me. I feel very lucky to be here. Oh, I, I'm lucky to have you. Seriously, it's been oh. so much fun. Anyway. It has been fun. Thank you so much and goodbye, everyone. All right. Bye, guys.